Hey, so this lesson is just continuing from the last one and more focused on what happens to standard deviation, the mean and variance as you transform data. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, maybe I'll just get straight to this. Um, so we have a data set. What is it? Who cares? It's called data set A, and I know it has a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 3. So we always want to forget. Right? Sorry, we don't want to forget. We always want to remember that uh, this represents the mean, which is the Greek letter mu, and this represents standard deviation, which is Greek letter sigma, lowercase sigma. Um, so it doesn't really matter what the data is. We have, it has a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 3. So for the first part, what if all the values are decreased by 2? So whatever the values are, we subtract 2 from all of them. How will that affect the mean and the standard deviation? Well, the mean, uh, if every value in this data set has now, is now being decreased by 2, that means the mean will decrease by 2. And so the mean will now be just 10 minus 2, so 8. And if we were adding 2 to everything, the mean would go up by 2. Um, and what, however we add, whatever we add or subtract from each value, that will the exact same change will happen to the mean. As to the standard deviation, it will not change. So the standard deviation will still be 3 because although all the data points in this case have moved down by 2, they still have the same dispersion from one another, the distance between them all. And that's really what standard deviation is. It's a measurement of how spread the data is from as a whole. And all while everything is down by 2, that doesn't change the standard deviation at all. So for the second part, all the values are multiplied by negative 1.5. And then again, what's the mean and what's the standard deviation? And so the mean, where it was 10 before, um, if every data point, whatever it is, is being multiplied by 10 by negative 1.5, then we just multiply 10 by negative 1.5, and we get negative 15. And so that's our new mean. The standard deviation will change. Because it's not like all the points are just moving up or down. The points are, well, they're, they are spreading out. So they're 1.5 times farther apart in some ways. And now, in this case, the negative doesn't matter. The standard deviation is always positive. And so the standard deviation will be the same as what we had before, which was 3, but multiplied by the absolute value of this negative 1.5. Or really, just 3 times 1.5 which is 4.5. Remember, standard deviation is always positive, and therefore the negative uh, transformation here doesn't really affect that, but it definitely affects the mean. The mean can be positive, negative, whatever. All right, so I have a table here that's a frequency table showing the mass of 20, a sample of 25 fish, and we can see uh, this table here. Um, we're saying, say there's a calibration error where it turns out all the measurements were underestimated by 1.5 grams. So that means every, me every data point here is actually 1.5 grams too small. So we want to add 1.5 to every data point. All right, so how will that affect just the mean? So first, I, I have several options. I could just change all the data here. But what I want to do, since the focus of this lesson is really looking at what happens when you have data, you have perhaps the mean and the standard deviation, and then you realize there's a transformation, I want to find the mean of just this, and which I can do on a GDC quite quickly um, make, by making a frequency table. Keep in mind, um, since I have a range of data for each of my classes here, um, I need to find the midpoint value. So I want to find halfway between 0 and 1. So I'm going to use 0 0.5 and 1.5 and 2.5 and so on in my table. So my table will have two columns. For the mass, I'll have these values here. For the frequency, I'll have these values here. Keep in mind, this is an estimate now, but this is what we always, this is the convention whenever we want to use a frequency table like this where we don't actually have the exact data. It's been grouped. We have grouped data. So if I just, from what we've learned before, if I just take this data here and I find the mean, so I'll say as is, um, the mean is 2.74, and that's what my GDC told me. 
right? That is the mean, the estimated mean of this. And again, it is an estimate because I don't actually know of the, the, for example, this one fish that has a mass between zero and one grams. I don't know if it really was 0.5, that's an estimate. So this is still an estimate, no matter how many decimal places I keep there. All right, um, however, now it says here, it turns out all these data points were underestimated by 1.5 grams. So all I need to do now is this. So therefore, I just need to take my new mean will equal 2.74 plus 1.5 which is 4.24 grams, and that's my new mean. I should get the exact same value, should I have taken all these values here and added 1.5 to every one. Um, to me, that seems like a bit more work than what I did, so that's why I did what I did. Lastly, I have a screenshot of a TI-84 showing the one variable statistics for a data set. What's the data set? I don't know. Um, but you can see the mean right here, and you can see the standard deviation. I'm saying, what if this time all the data points are decreased by 40% and then increased by 1.5? I want to find the mean, the standard deviation, and the variance. All right, so first keep in mind when we subtract 40% from a value, that's the same as keeping 60% or multiplying by 0 0.6. So subtracting 60%, same as multiplying by 0 0.6. So really, I want to imagine that all my data points are being multiplied by 0 0.6. I'm finding 60% of the original data, same as losing 40%. And then I want to add 1.5. All right, so let's look at the mean. So the mean, the, the initial mean, before we have this change, as I can see, is 5.5. 575. As we've seen before, whatever the transformations are to all the data will also affect the mean. And so I want to take this and multiply by 0 0.6 and then subtract 1.5. And I get uh, 4.845. That's my new mean. Next, I'll do standard deviation. So I can see the standard deviation was, now I got a lot of decimals. I want my final answer rounded to three decimal places. For all my intermediate work, I should keep far more than three decimal places. I don't feel like writing down all those decimals, but I'll write down the first five or six decimals. So 1.04612, um, I'll go with that. That's it. Uh, for the standard deviation, it will be affected by the losing 40% or multiplying by 0.6, it will not be affected by the plus 1.5. So I just need to take that into account. And so rounded to three decimal places, I get 0 0.628. It's my new standard deviation. Lastly, the variance, which is standard deviation squared. Um, quite simply, I can just take my previous answer and square it. Or even better, take the answer that's on my calculator and square that. That'll be more accurate. Keep in mind, if I take this value here and square it, my rounding error will kind of grow. And so it's very important to not actually literally square that value there, to square the value that's on my calculator. And so if I do that, I square the value that was on my calculator, and then I round to three decimals, I get approximately 0 0.394. So there is my mean, my standard deviation, and my variance.